Good morning, GTS Retail Partners, and welcome to our uh, Monday edition of the GTS Retailer to Publisher webinar series. We're so glad you joined us today. If you're watching uh, live, you can interact with our uh, presenter by hovering your mouse over your screen or clicking on the chat button on your phone, and uh, that'll give you the opportunity to get into the chat window, and uh, that'll pop up on the side. You'll be able to uh, write questions in there, and generally speaking, you have two options for those questions. You can either send them to the panelists only, or you can send them to all panelists and attendees, and then everyone will be able to see uh, the question. And we'll be responding to those questions throughout the, uh, throughout the presentation. If you have a question about a product that's being discussed, go ahead and ask it in the chat, and then uh, we'll give some time in between sections to answer those questions, and then also time at the end of the presentation as well for questions. So great opportunity there to get all your uh, WizKids questions out, uh, get any questions that you have about miniatures or role-playing aspects, as well as uh, the uh, Warlock tiles. So great products all. Uh, let's see, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button so that you'll be aware of any upcoming webinars, as well as uh, when these videos get posted, you'll be able to watch them first thing if you're, if you're not uh, able to join us live. Uh, without any further ado, I want to go ahead and pass this over to uh, Patrick O'Hagan from WizKids to tell us all about the upcoming and current status of the Warlock tile system, which has been a huge seller for GTS as well as for uh, WizKids. And it's a great product line with a lot of growth potential. So well, I'll hand this over to Patrick for a presentation. Great, great. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Patrick O'Hagan, and uh, I lead all things RPGs uh, at WizKids. And what does that mean? Uh, that really means that uh, today we're talking about Warlock, so I get to talk about Warlock and our 4D line. Uh, I'm also responsible for our D&D uh, line, uh, Nolzers and the Icons, as well as Idols, which is the 2D minis coming out, as well as any other thing in 2D world, uh, sorry, in the D&D world, uh, which includes the foam plaques, the trophy plaques, uh, and other things coming out with D&D that I can't talk about. I uh, also am very happy to represent and work with Paizo on our Pathfinder and Starfinder brands, as well as anything RPG uh, else that we're working on. Uh, but today, uh, I get to talk about Warlock. And I like an interactive conversation, so I want to say, please feel free to ask questions. And, and Scott, if you see the questions uh, within and throughout, then just let me know. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll talk about them and ans answer the question as we go. Um, uh, so the, the key thing is, uh, I think most of you, hopefully, uh, there's how many of you in here? Uh, there's a number of you, that's all that matters. Uh, know that we have launched uh, Warlock. We launched Warlock back in August. Uh, and for those of you who were lucky enough to go to Gamma, I was, it was the last show I went to before the country shut down. But uh, at Gamma, we were able to actually give a copy of Warlock, a, a box of the dungeon tiles, to every retailer who was there. Uh, and we got a lot of really good fanfare. Uh, however, you know, uh, we learned a lot since we launched in August. And I'm going to talk to you today about what we've learned, what we're changing, and what the road ahead looks like. So I'm going to uh, just start the presentation so we can go into that. Let me know if everyone can see the presentation. I think everyone probably should be able to. Yes, it's visible. Perfect. Thank you, Scott. Um, so uh, this is just the, the, uh, just the intro slide, but one of the first things that we, we kind of realized, and this, uh, we talked about this at Gamma, uh, but uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to be able to show you that Warlock is uh, a retail-focused brand. And I say retail-focused brand. Remember, we launched this in retail. and could have done many things we could have you know a lot of our competitors go kickstarter in this space in this space uh, you know a lot of the a lot of the the main the main competitor in this space and i say the main competitor the other the other play in this space is a kickstarter only. we decided that one of the gaps and one of the kind of focus that we want to do is want to have tile in uh in retail and so we launched a whole bunch of we launched seven SKUs. uh within those seven SKUs, we, we thought that was kind of a good launch candidate we launched the dungeon tile uh, we launched the town and village stairs. We launched a door skew, a dungeon dressing skew, a summoning circle skew, which had an LED tech in it, 
right? We launched a, a really, I think, a compelling list of SKUs. And at Gamma, one of the things we talked about was the future. So I'm going to talk to you about what the future is, maybe even show you some images. But one of the things I wanted to, to, to first in part is that we wanted to let you know that this, this, this brand is viable and growing. And I say growing as in like, we're, we're planning next year for independent releases, but at the same time, making sure we have our product in stock. Um, but going into this, we, we realized that the, that kind of purple box that we launched with was nice, but that potentially it leaves room for retail uh, assortment planning. Um, and so like the UPM line, where we actually just added colors recently with our UPM Wave 12 and the reprint that's coming in uh, for all our unpainted miniatures, uh, we wanted to add color. And so what we did is a price point. We, we basically went with three price points. Uh, the base set MSRP will be moving forward 129, except for those launch queues, those, those two launch queues, when I say the launch queues, the two Town and Village one and Dungeon, Dungeon Tile one, we're gonna keep those at $99. Um, but future base sets will be 129, and those are gonna be in purple. And so every kind of box, that, 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 kind of, that pizza box that it came in, uh, that I think a lot of you liked, and a lot of, a lot of customers liked, because it has a handle, as a case, you can store it, in. that was our intent, obviously. Um, we'll continue to be, so full sets, with, so what, what are base sets? Well, base sets are full sets of tiles with walls and doors, I like to have a little like, I can buy this and play by itself, right? So this is a standalone product. So coming out in next month, when we have our first full wall, and we'll talk about full walls in general, but we have this new thing called expansion. And I, I wanna be very clear that expansions are a different color box, they're green. On the actual box itself, it's not on this one, but it says, you know, does not contain tiles. One of the first things is a lot of people will have bought Dungeon Tile 1 or Town and Village 1. And I don't want them to have to buy the tile uh, of, and I say tile, you, you can't see uh, my video, but the, I, I don't want them to buy the actual plates, the tiles themselves. And so we came out with an expansion where we took some of those out, took all of those out. So all they're really buying are the interior doors, the walls, uh, interior walls, the things that kind of make it uh, kind of, uh, I would say, unique by itself. And we want to charge $79 for those. And these are things that I add on to the base sets. So if you think about it, things I add on to my base sets are walls. If I already have the, if I already have the tiles, or if it, you know, one of the future things we have coming out is expansion to the line. Like, what if I had a round corners or curves, which we have coming out in January? That would be an expansion as well. So I really want to kind of call out that that we're going to create a base set, an expansion, and then really set that accessory. And the accessories are set things that expand the base. Mostly are dressing. So mostly are they gonna be dungeon dressing that you'll hear me talk about today. Uh, and so all are color coded, purple and green are the same size box. So we wanted to keep that. And, and, and a lot of you probably don't know, but we built and designed these boxes to actually fit on a pallet, right? So if you think about it, they go on what a lot of gamers already have in that space, the, the on the spine, uh, it'll have what it is, on the right-hand side, if it's not a base set, it'll talk about it being an expansion or having that little gear as an accessory. So we're really trying to get at really kind of sneaky things to actually make the packaging very, very useful. That's the first thing you're gonna see. Uh, coming, starting with uh, the reprints that are coming out now. In fact, you may not know this, but Warlock, uh, Warlock did quite well, and we were very, very aggressive. Uh, I don't know if many people know uh, my, uh, my boss, Justin, but one of the things that we did when we sat down with the line on Warlock is he wanted to make sure that we had enough stock going into the holidays and enough stock even going into and after the holidays. And so we, we very quickly um, ran out of a product uh, and we did a fast reprint beat before, it even hit the, before the product even hit the street, we actually started a reprint and we're actually on our next reprint. So what does that mean? Well, that means that, we're, again, uh, we want to make sure we're, we have things in stock uh, and that we have a lot. But the, the first reprint will actually fix and fix this color coding issue. You're going to see the, the, the blue boxes, the purple boxes. And then with the October release of Full Walls, you're going to see the green box. And then you'll see that same structure uh, set forward uh, moving forward. Um, moving on to slide, slide three, one of the things that 
we heard very, very uh, fast. And this didn't come from gamma so much as it is in the time between gamma and the time uh, before launch. And so between March and August, we heard very, very clearly that the clips were just were too, too hard. And so it's funny, you know, we went back and forth and back and forth. You can't, you, you, you can't believe how many different evaluations and or I would say version of the clip that we had. Uh, we had many, uh, and in what we ended with is that we wanted people to be able to pick up their model, and you can't see me moving the hand, but they want, we wanted people to pick up their model, and we wanted them to uh, really be able to have that model so they can move and, you know, pre-build a, a module, or sorry, a setting, and then bring it off of a shelf and put it on a table, or do, you know, move it around a table, and so we chose a very sturdy clip. I, I think a very, very hard, sturdy clip. And, you know, because we had softer clips before, but whatever the case, we chose that and we launched with that, thinking that that would be the reason why people would want it, is that they'd have to just, it, again, there's a clipping mechanism where you can actually clip in where you, 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 you basically pivot in, but a lot of people didn't want to pivot. They wanted to just push it in. Uh, and, you know, well, guess what? Well, we learned. And so we, we fast-tracked, again, even before launch, uh, the Warlock clips. And in fact, Warlock clips are available. Uh, I don't know, Scott, if you've picked them up yet, uh, but they're available for distribution. They are already in stock. Uh, we have them produced and sent over. Uh, like I said, very, very fast to make sure that people have them. So these are very, uh, so, I don't know, Scott, uh, you know, I can talk about how soft they are, but we sent you. 50 clips, you want to talk about what they do and how, how they engage with the actual uh, Warlock uh, tiles themselves? Yeah, I can tell you, we, we got an early sample of the, of the original clips and they were, they were quite firm and it, it requires a certain, um, a certain touch to get those in. You know, you kind of have to, like, like Patrick was saying, you have to work them in, uh, push them in and, and angle them in, change the angle and that clips them in. Uh, but with the with the easy warlock tiles that they sent me samples of, uh, they do just clip right in. You can you can actually just physically push it in, and uh, it's still very sturdy, still holds the product in place. But they're much easier to to work with, and and they're just this uh, they're a little bit more flexible, and so that that makes them easier to use. Yeah, they're still they're still near indestructible, but they're not as uh, as sturdy. Well. We learned and we heard a lot of feedback. And so moving forward, uh, uh, all new sets will have the, the soft kind of clips. So what you're gonna see is actually the easy clips are the standard clips in the full walls that are coming out. Um, and future reprints, uh, as, soon as, as soon as the base set is done, when it comes to, um, as soon as base sets are done, when it comes to the, the original sets, and like when I say done, sold through in the channel, We'll probably have another reprint coming by the end of the year that has them, but we won't have that yet. However, what we do have is many, many, many easy clips. We they're available, like I said already, for for uh, for uh, again. I don't know, Scott. I think we talked on Friday that you, you didn't have any orders yet, but they're available to purchase now from us. And they okay, are. Um, what's that? Sorry, Scott. I was just saying that that's correct. We do have we do have existing inventory on the original Warlock tile clips but uh, we have not brought in the easy clips. So we just, we just found out those were available, so we'll be doing that. Okay, and so what are these? Well, they're a little baggies. Uh, the, the, the clips themselves are kind of a light blue color so that they won't be confused with the white clip. We made, made sure of that. And that for a bag of 100 clips, they're $4.99. Uh, and they're really, again, they're, they're priced to be inexpensive. There's a lot of clips. And that will really, I think, help solve a lot of issues. Like, hey, uh, I want these clips. Uh, I want to use the tiles, but the clips are too hard. Well, we have uh, new clips coming. Sorry, new clips available. They're already here, uh, and so we'll we'll have that. And again, like I said, all new all new launches will have the easy clips. And so I'll show you one of the new launches. And I'm actually going to go out of presentation so I can actually show you a build of these live, but. One of the things that we did is, and what we promised uh, retailers, was that this just wasn't, wasn't going to be some one launch of something we did, and then we wait a year, and then launch another, and then wait a year. No, 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 no. Uh, that's, not, that's not the WizKids way. We want to make sure we 
we start providing a lot of value for customers and retailers right off the bat. So seven SKUs at launch was the plan. In fact, we delayed the launch because all seven weren't ready. Well, uh, in October, we have four SKUs coming out. Basically, we have uh, the dungeon tile, both base set for $129.99, as well as the expansion for 80. And then we have the town and village base set for $129. What is that? Remember, what, what's the difference between the base set? Remember, it has all of the pieces. A base set is all you need ready to go, whereas an expansion would be sold to customers that already actually have the first tile box, right? These will come standard with the, with the clips. And let me actually show you, uh, I'm gonna stop presentation. So I can actually show you what it looks like. So uh, you can see the picture, but here I have, I'm lucky enough to have a kind of build. So you can kind of see the difference in the wall heights and I'll just show you the difference. And I don't, I should have had this out from a kind of wall to wall, um, but you can kind of see the difference in heights, right? Here is the full wall, single door and a, a half wall wall. And so let me, just show you what that looks like with just, so here's a, 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 an exterior wall, but I'm just gonna show you how it looks like compared to each other. So you can kind of see, again, just the height difference. It's not a lot, but for some people, it's everything. And so, you know, uh, one of the things that we did when we launched, was we, we understood that, that there are some people who play full wall and there are some people that play half wall. And we're gonna learn how many people want each uh, so that we can talk about our future growth because you can imagine there may be a, a reason for us to produce a little bit of one and a lot of the other or vice versa, right? So again, uh, think of this as kind of us learning how consumers want to engage in our product. So full walls uh, are beautiful. They keep the design uh, of the half walls, but just go a little further up. And you can kind of see some of the, these are not renders on the actual package themselves. These are actual real pictures. I'll pause here because I think this is important in, in case there are any, any questions. Scott, do you see any questions? I didn't, I didn't look when I went out of the presentation. Uh, no questions in the chat just yet about that. Um, there was a question about price point and uh, budget consciousness going sure. forward if there, were, if there were some additional options other sure. than that. So what's the question? The question is price points. Uh, okay. The question is whether or not there was a plan for like a budget line in mind. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing there was and originally, when we originally had this, and Scott, you probably remember this from the solicits, uh, we actually had a, uh, a $50 option uh, where we, we actually had kind of, um, instead, of, instead of having the $100 option, we had like a $50 option. But what we realized is for the $50, you're gonna get like maybe uh, a 10 by 10 room and maybe a little bit more, but you know, not, I mean, you, you'd have a little bit more. Um, and then for hundred dollars, you'd get just so much. And I, I think people who have seen the actual full set know the value of the full set, but I can tell you there's not, uh, there will be, uh, additional things in the Warlock line. We're, we're coming out with this thing called Encounter in the Box and Encounter in the Box. Think of this, that one of the first thing that launches is going to be, it's, it's going to be a February law, or sorry, March, April release. And what it'll be is like, think of it like prison break where you have um prison you have a prison cell we have a guard a prison guard you have a prison captain you have warlock like uh prison doors right and walls uh surrounded by some some kind of like either paper tiles or real tiles we're going to sell those for really inexpensive and those are going to be ways that we can get out of budget line um which is maybe to that point right we're going to be able to sell a lot of the stuff i would say inexpensively as we start talking about scenarios that we build out because you can imagine we have a lot of different molds and models now uh, for our 4D and Warlock line. So we're gonna start utilizing those to actually create sets that I think are compelling for customers. Uh, and more to come on that encounter in the box. But there's probably gonna, we're gonna come out with six and they're gonna be, if you think about encounter in the box, they're gonna be very, very focused on a specific encounter like prison break, wrongfully accused, right? Uh, apothecary explosion you know, things like that, that are just basically encounters that if your DM is running it or your gamer is running it, game uh, ma the game uh, master is running it, that you can just pull off the shelf and have it right available. So more to come on that, but I think that'll probably get to more of the budget. And we may even, as we learn more, uh, have more and more 
information on like just if you if you, any of you are lucky to get the free RPG day room, uh, we came up with that. That was just a, a tiny little room. And we may do things like that, which again are 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 are, are low enough uh, low enough in cost point for customers to kind of engage in the actual process. Okay, going back to full work. Hey Patrick, before yeah. you jump back in, yeah. um, right now your screen is showing the current slide as well as the next slide. So I don't know if you want oh, to. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That's not hear a that idea. a little bit. It's not. It's showing the wrong thing is what you're telling me. Thank you. Let me show you the right one then how's that how's that? Is that is that better yeah yep that's it okay cool thank you scott okay so let's talk about the next slide so then that comes out in october and we're really excited about it uh but again it goes back to what well, we realized that uh this isn't done right we have a lot more to grow and so in january uh we're launching angles and curves and so there will be these are all expansions you can see that that 79.99 price so we'll have a, because you actually need, um, you, you, you could actually play with these because they come with the actual angled tiles, but I don't think you just want to create a tower. You want to create a tower with, you know, some sort of edge, or maybe you just want to create a tower. You can create a tower. Uh, it's really up to you. But on the dungeon side, the angles and curves will have uh, what you can build here. This is the angled set. Um, you can imagine a curve is just a kind of like cross curve or it's just an angle. So the angles uh, for Dungeon Tile, Dungeon Tile 3, uh, will come out with $80. And eventually, we're going to get rid of the, the numbers. We just, at launch, want to have these numbers so people, when they buy it, know that it's what set they're getting. And then we're just going to call it what it is. But it, it, we realize that launch, it's good to have numbers so people don't get confused. Um, any more than that, people will think, do I need two to actually have? Uh, do I need one to buy four? So we, we want to get out of that, of course. Um, so if you think about it, the dungeon tile uh, angles uh, curves is what you see here in the upper left. The town and village curves is what you see in the lower left. But what it just enables you to start building is build out your 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 dungeons and or your buildings and your towns. And so uh, the windows come out. You know, this is so many different var varieties. These come at half wall heights, and of course, will come as standard with with the easy clips, like I mentioned. So they will all have the easy clips uh, standard. So this comes out January. And then uh, I'll talk about some dungeon dressings that actually come out with this because one of the things you're also going to see um, with this is that each time we release kind of a base set uh, or expansion like this, we're gonna come out with an expansion that goes along with it. So if you think about it, if we're coming out with angles and curves and we have full walls, well, the next thing we're coming out with, and any questions about this before I move on, Scott? Nope, all good. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing will be Town Square. So if anyone is familiar with, with the kind of Lego tiles, I am a big, big Lego freak. I love Legos. I have many, way too many Legos in my house. But if you're familiar with those tiles, they have the tiles that you build your towns on. I was thinking, well, why wouldn't we want to be able to have uh, those tiles that we can actually build our scenarios on or build our stories on and buildings and, and. And so we came out with two by two tiles that enable you to build all of this and then can kind of construct, if you think about it, a, a little town. And that is fully constructible and movable and adaptable and modular, right? So you could build a straight line, you know, just one road town. You could build a T town, right? Where it's basically, uh, you, know, a, 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 you know, the crossroads type thing in the middle. Uh, you can build many different things with this site. It, this is a base set, so it's $129. Um, but it enables you to build that kind of framework where there's cobblestone and there's brick and there's layers and there's sewers and the sewers come off, right? So you can, you know, again, you, it, it's, it's only a certain little tile, right? So, but there's some depth to the tiles. At the same time coming out with this, and I'll show you this, um, you'll see it very soon. We're coming out with a town square. So if you think about it, like basically a marketplace uh, dungeon dressing. So this is the town square. And then with town square, we have a marketplace. And what's in a marketplace in a medieval world? Well, you can imagine the gallows and stocks and, you know, stalls and fruit baskets and, you know, the, the, anything, you know, things you would find in a typical medieval village. Um, so this comes also out in January and we're very excited about this. So in January, we're coming out with this set plus these four. So there'll be five sets coming out in January. But again, this is really the kind of first start and expansion of the line of, of Warlock. 
And again, these will come with easy clips as standard, all fully painted. I think that's something I, I, I sometimes neglect to talk about is that while we may have an unpainted uh, set in the future, we're not planning on it right now. And every single thing we talk about in the Warlock line will come painted. And so the tiles will be all painted um, in the styles and, and, and variety that you're used to. Okay. So we talk about uh, the base set coming out in August and the reprint. We talked about October with the full walls. We talk about January with sets. What comes next? Well, if you think about it, we need to have one inch. And so a lot of customers and and any in some retailers I talked to mentioned, hey, I built out the 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 the, the dungeon tile one and the town and village one. And it really just didn't enable me to, you know, like, what if I wanted a one by five corridor? What if I wanted a dungeon that was only five feet, you know, wide? Well, again, uh, the tiles didn't let you create that so much. Well, this does. And so this enables you to build out and fill in those gaps. So right now you'll have angles, you'll have curves, you'll have the kind of base sets that'll enable you to build like the kind of, you know, square rectangle rooms. And then with angles and curves, you can build lots of different, you know, an angled room, sorry, a box room with a tower on one side. Well, this enables you to build that kind of like set where it's just one inch, right? So there'll be a lot of different styles. These are all, these will also, of course, be expansions. So we'll have four expansions. And these will be expansions because even though they're going to have the tiles and they'll have the walls, you, we probably think that uh, alone they aren't going to be very useful without the base set. But again, this comes out in April and we're very, very excited about it. Um, I just showing you images of the town and village, but you can imagine the images for the actual uh, dungeon tiles. So, so far we have a launch in January, a launch in April. Uh, I mentioned four releases next year and I'm gonna talk about those, but I'll, I'll kind of pause for any questions that we, you may have on just the line itself. Okay. Looks like there is one question uh, from Tabitha. Mm -hmm. Will road tiles also be double-sided and what is on the reverse? Ah, so let's go back to that. We thought about double-siding the, the town square. You're talking about the town square tiles, I'm guessing, right? Yes, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. So we thought about double-siding the, the, the town square. The problem is is the we wanted to create an uneven surface of the town because you can imagine uh, cobblestones aren't even. And so in creating a, in creating an uneven surface for the town square, we actually had problems with stability because if you flip it over and it's uneven, well, you're not going to have an, a flat surface. And so we had to actually make that just flat. Uh, and, and there's, there's not really anything on the bottom side because of that. And we went back and forth and back and forth on that. That's, Tabitha, that's a great question. Generally, uh, everything we do will be double-sided for the double use, but if there's no, if there's no way to make that happen logistically, then we have to not do that. But it's a, I guess it's a great question. All right. So let's talk about what comes after one inch. So you can imagine that what comes after one inch is the Warlock Dungeon Tiles 4, which is caverns. And so what you see here are reference images from what I, if you've ever been lucky enough to go underground, uh, the, we created more of a very traditional caverns. I, um, we have sculpts of this ready in, 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 in testing, but you can imagine it's going, these are real pictures, these aren't renders. Uh, this is uh, Dratch Caverns, which is in Mallorca, Spain, uh, but it's just gorgeous, it's beautiful. Salagsite, stalagmites, it has that crystal kind of green, blue water, which we're gonna have. Um, so again, it goes back to, this will come out in June, this will be a full base set and $429, but it's just going to be really cool. And what, our, what we're imagining here is more you're walking through a three-dimensional space where the, the tiles themselves are stackable. And then uh, on that, you'll have things like bridges and, you know, like slogs and, and uh, you, you can imagine. I mean, imagine uh, Indiana Jones uh, and the Temple of Doom underneath, you know, that type of thing. And that's really where our imagination went on this, is, is a lot of different ways that we can really imagine real life, I would say caverns, and I say real life caverns. What I'm saying is a lot of the reference images are gonna be stalactites that are, that are stackable that I'll show you very soon. This comes out uh, in June, and then we'll come out with more than likely two dungeon grunting uh, uh, expansions. Uh, things like stalactites and stalagmites and pools, 
and pillars, and you can just mushrooms and crystals, which we'll talk about. The next thing, and I mentioned this comes out in June, is in then September, we want to have Warlock Dungeon House 5, which is sewers. So our reference here is more the sewers of Paris. If so if, any, if you guys have been lucky to actually be in Paris and actually see the sewers of Paris, you know they're medieval, they're really creepy, they're really, really just scary. But we want to imagine this encapsulated, closed off environment where you can build out a sewer framework with water underneath. Uh, and then of course, dungeon dressings that go along with this. So this will come out in September. And then I mentioned Warlock Dungeon Dressing. So let me just uh, spend some time talking about what dressings we have coming out that support these. The first one will be Town Square. And I mentioned that it'll come out with a statue. It'll have a little, it'll have a little uh, you know, um, cart. It'll have the, the gallows, the stocks, the, of course, the market, you know, the markets, you know, kind of seller booths uh, are kind of just the stalls. That comes out in January to support the, the town square. It, it's called, it's called, it's not called market in town square. It's actually called marketplace. Sorry, this is an old name. Uh, the caverns one and two, we're going to have two sets. It'll have boats and it'll have mushrooms and it'll have bridges. It'll have rope bridges. It'll have stalactites and stalagmites like you see in the right hand side here that are modular. And I say modular, you can't see it on this red. This is, these are renders, of course. Uh, but imagine where you'll have the base and the top that fit together like a, like a Lego. And you'll have an ability to actually make them taller or uh, taller uh, so that you can actually put in segments like, like a, you know, like I mentioned on Friday, uh, think of this like your uh, Thanksgiving table where the, you know, the table itself is, is two halves, but then you add another leaf in the middle and it makes it expand expandable. That comes out again in, this comes out in uh, June. Uh, battle mats. So one of the things that we want to do is you saw those caverns, the images of the Dratch caverns that I had. And so that's our reference. When I say reference, that's our kind of our inspiration. Um, and so imagine that you have this as, a, as the base layer and that you can put the actual caverns on top so that you can actually be hopping across this. And so you can imagine these are, this is the lovely picture of the kind of blue green cave water. But then we thought, well, maybe they're jumping over acid. Maybe they're in the middle of a volcano. Uh, so maybe that's lava. Uh, so we have lots and lots of plants for these. These are going to be two by two. We don't know the price per uh, one. We probably will release them as two mats, but we'll have some time on that for June 21 release. And then February, we have the kitchen and tavern. Uh, so this is one of the big things we asked customers um, is, hey, what are we missing in our kind of like line of Warlock? And the number one thing they like is like town settings and town dressings. And so we have a kitchen and a tavern, two separate, separate SKUs. Kitchen will have things like stoves and ovens and outhouses and just things you'd find in a medieval kitchen. The tavern will have things like a bar and a, a chimney and a stage and things again that you'd find in a, in a medieval tavern. Along with that, uh, in February, we have a torture chamber coming out. And that torture chamber will be more a dressing that is more for dungeon dressing, but you can put the torture, again, the good thing about these dressings is we're not putting any tiles on them. We're just basically taking painted figures and, and bringing them in so you can have them on a battle mat. You can have them on our tiles. You can have them on someone else's tiles. They will fit in any tiles. And so you're gonna see a, a lot of dressings for us. And these dressings, some of these may look familiar to you because what we're doing is we're taking our unpainted miniature line of deep cuts and we're taking, a, we're, we're, we're retiring a number of them to bring them into a painted set that we can sell for in the Warlock line. So what you see here is a stock, you see a stretcher, you see, of course, a, um, a, a torture, uh, you know, some, a, a torturer. And then you have the boiling bull, which is a new sculpt. So again, we'll, we'll, we're not just taking all the old deep cuts. We have a number of new ones coming in. This is a boiling bowl. And so if you've ever been to Europe and have been fortunate enough to go to a uh, torture Museum, there's a lot of things that we have in here that, that will uh, link to that. This will come out in February. And then finally, and again, I mentioned the uh, sewers will have dungeon dressing. I'm calling it creepy crawly things right now. But also in February, we're going to take the townspeople set and we're going to release that fully painted um, so that you'll have the townspeople fully painted. It'll have blacksmith, it'll have all the different people. There's, if you remember, there are 40 little miniatures in that townspeople set. We're going to release those as two SKUs, fully painted. Uh, it should be pretty nice. 
So again, I, I, that's, our, that's my presentation. I really wanted to just share with you the future of where we're going with Warlock and really just want to focus on the fact that we're here, we're creating new content, we're keeping the old content in stock, and we're very, very, very focused on retail first um, elements. And with that, I'll leave it for questions. And Great. please feel free to ask any question about Warlock or anything else RPG related if you have questions. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, you know great information. Uh, lots going on in the line and a and a bright future for the Warlock tiles as well as the 4D line being associated with that. Um, happy to see some of those uh, ultra pro, or not all the unpainted miniatures. I had UP in my head, so I went with mm. the wrong the wrong brand. But don't worry, uh, man. Yeah, the unpainted miniatures getting kind of a revitalization as painted figures for. Uh, supporting the Warlock line. I think that's a that's a good move for those figures, for those product lines. Uh, no questions yet in the chat, but if you do have a question, uh, feel free to just pop that in there. Uh, there was a lot of information there, so if you have uh, questions on any of that uh, or any of the unpainted miniatures, the painted lines, uh, Starfinder, Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons, or the Boys Kids um, lines, of the, and there is a question. So the question is, have you considered a smaller clip that will provide more support for short exterior wall pieces? Um, yeah, we have. Uh, we've actually beta two additional wall, thing, uh, wall elements uh, uh, for clips. So we, we, we had what you call, uh, and we were calling out, we called it a swift clip. We didn't, we prototyped it. We saw that it was viable, but we, we thought with the change out of the clip already, we wanted to try to create simplicity and, and wait on any additional clips. Because we also have other clip entities as part of this. But one of the first things we want to get through is we want to we wanna make sure uh, that the easy clip is rolled out. People understand that it's, again, uh, that it's there. So that that is the reason why we didn't kind of roll out with three new clips. Because uh, you can imagine if we would have done that, the, the consumer confusion. It's yeah. already gonna be confusing enough. Like, well, you know, I, I can imagine the number one thing that people are gonna ask is, hey, these new, this new set has the easy clips. Can I get them? And so th th that's why we created a really low cost option for that. We think that, you know, $5 for 100 clips is really, really low cost. We made sure that it was really compelable uh, for the clips because our idea is not to uh, make money on the clips. It's to make, it's it's really to uh, make sure people have the clips so that they need them, lose them. They're not going to break, but just in case they do break because someone takes scissors through them, um, that 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 people can have different options. Great. Yeah, I mean, so far that's the only. It's the only other question. So if you do have questions on any of these lines, you know, go ahead and pop those in. Patrick's your, your go-to guy for that kind of information. He's the he's, uh, lead on that uh, at WizKids. So this is the guy you want to talk to if you have questions. No questions about the unpainted line? That's very... Okay. Yeah. Well, we've seen great things coming from uh, WizKids. You know, the new trophy plaque the owlbear is pretty amazing that's yeah. a that's a great piece we're real excited about the yeah. pathfinder goblin of course is one that pathfinder goblin is the first of, bit for. first of many we're gonna do we're gonna do another life-size uh, small creature with pathfinder this year that i'll i will reveal in the months to come uh with dnd you can imagine there's a lot more coming with that um yeah there's just there's just so much uh d and is exploding right now, as I think a lot of you know, and so we're really working with our partners at Wizards of the Coast to create a lot of compelling, fun game product elements, and you're going to see a lot of things with that coming, which excites all of us. Excellent. Well, uh, I don't see any additional questions, so I think uh, you've got everybody's questions answered. Uh, right. We can go ahead and close it out for today. And then if there's additional questions, retailers, please feel free to contact me. Uh, Patrick, do you want to say any, anything last before we go? No, just again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Scott and Scott and I talk on a regular basis so that, you know, he can, he can let me know and I'll, I'll try to answer them. Uh, there is one thing that a lot of you don't know, but uh, maybe some of you do. Um, 
And Scott, I'm sorry, this is not anything competitive or anti-competitive because we don't talk about anything in that. But we created a, because remember when I mentioned that the, one of the first things I like to do is talk to retailers. I want to make sure you know that there is uh, a retail direct channel on Facebook. And I say direct, it's direct communication channel. Uh, and that's on Facebook. It's just called WizKids Direct. And it really is so that we can share things. And I know, I know our line is big. And Scott, you, you'll be the first to attest that we have a lot of SKUs in our line. Um, and we're working on many different things on that. But I wanted to just say to you that if, if you don't know about it already, it's where we're releasing images and, and solicits and SKUs. But it's also where you can ask questions direct so that if you have a, if you have a question like, hey, when is this coming out or can I look at this? It's just a way for you to across all of our different product lines. So, you know, fully in support of communication between retailers and publishers. I mean, that's part of why we have these uh, webinar series so that our retailers and our publishers can talk to one another directly and, uh, and answer questions, exchange information. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think having those retail focus groups on Facebook or on social media is a great thing. So uh, I'm fully in support of that. Great, great. Yeah. So the, Derek asks, is the Facebook page for all of WizKids, including clicks? Indeed it is. All of, all of uh, my counterparts are there. So if you think about WizKids, there we're three companies. We're a hero clicks company, we're an RPG company, and we're a board game company. I have counterparts from both of my sister teams that are there as well. Excellent. Yeah, if you want to, I don't know if you have the URL handy, but if you do, you can pop yeah, that in. Yeah, you know what? Let me, let, me, let me pull it up. Uh, uh, it's it's WizKids Direct. Let me just go. Let me let me pull it up really fast. Here we go. And there you go. So that that is in go. the chat now. So you have access to that. I'll give you just a minute to to get that put up there. Well. I'll go ahead and, and sign us off for the day. Thank you very much, Patrick, for being here. Of we course. really appreciate your participation in, in this program. Happy to do so. Happy yeah. to do so. Thanks. And, Bye, everyone. And thank you, retailers, for being a part of the program as well. It, it doesn't work without you guys in being involved, so we appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, go ahead and like and subscribe. <clears throat> There's also a link in the description for uh, getting future notifications of upcoming webinars, so we'll have additional vendors that we that we deal with here at GTS Distribution coming up um, to talk about their product lines as well. And I'm sure Patrick will be back in the near future for another webinar and, and to discuss some upcoming projects. Yes, we have a lot coming in D&D and Pathfinder. Very exciting. Yeah. So we appreciate the time. Uh, we want to return as much of your day back to you as possible. So thank you very much for being here and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Bye, everyone.